Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show number 405. And what you're looking at here is my new Eton Traveler 3 AM FM shortwave longwave radio. This is brand, brand new. This is just hit the market. Uh, I'm probably one of the first people to get one. And it's basically a Grundig G8, which I had and did a review, and I gave it away in one of my giveaways, so I don't have it here to compare it side by side. I wish I did. That's why I typically try to keep all the radios that I get, so that later on I can do comparisons. So anyway, so much for that. And... Um, a little bit about just receiving it before we actually get into the reviews. So let me set it aside here. It came in one of those, um, and I've got the lights down so the display shows up better on the radio. That's why the lights are down. But it came in one of these um, bubble shipping bags, envelopes. And that's it. It should have come in a box, but it didn't. And in that bag was the box. Now, Grundig, one thing that I had mentioned in the past, that Grundig always had very sturdy shipping boxes. And they could, you know, you, you could ship them just with the box and not even pack them with something else. This is uh, pretty crushable. And it was like this when I took it out of that bag, pouch, whatever you call it. But uh, at least the innards, which has this plastic insert here, a little tray, that protected the radio, so the radio wasn't damaged. So a little bit about shipping um, and packaging. Uh, for instance, oh, let me zoom over here. This is an old... Grundig radio, and let me get the zoom back a little bit, and uh, you can see this is a pretty substantial box, it's heavy cardboard, it's well constructed, and so, and it's got foam inside, styrofoam packing, so this guy is not going to get damaged by shipping, and it appears that Eaton is not that concerned about their packaging and on top of that um, Amazon didn't very do a very good job of boxing this thing up well it didn't box it up so anyway I wasted too much time on shipping let's go to the radio we'll get zoomed back in here like I say I've got the lights down so that the display when it's on it doesn't stay on and I have got a way to keep it on and I think that was true of the G8 also but I like this display. It, it's still, it's not showing up very good under my cheapo webcam. But I like this display. I just wish it would stay on. So anyway, um, so I'm going to use my report card system for um, reviewing this radio. Uh, because I've zoomed in here and the report card sheet is big, I'm not going to show you the report card sheet. But I will try to overlay it on this video when I edit the video. So the first thing on the report card is the look and feel. Um, and I'm going to digress a little bit again. This is the manual, and it's in about 16 billion languages. And the English, and it's real tiny. You can see, you know, it's, uh, you know, pretty tiny. Um, the English version is only about 10 pages. And it really doesn't tell you much in here. Enough to kind of get you started, but you're going to have to do uh, some trial and error figuring out how to use things. Um, I was confused because I couldn't find anything in here about using the air band, excuse me, long wave band, but nah, that's okay. So much for the manual. Again, I think the manuals have decreased in quality along with the packaging when Eaton took over. But we're concerned about the radio, so the heck with that stuff. Anyway, look and feel. I like this. This is 
What? Excuse me, I got a frog. Actually, I think I got an alligator in my throat. Anyway, this is kind of the uh, look and feel of the case for the new Eden radios. And they're all basically the same with this silver band. It's all plastic with a metal grill. Grill? Grill? Grill. Hater. Anyway, metal grill for the speaker. And they've all got this, although different sizes, this amber display. Amber on, let me see if I can get it to show up. Amber on black display. Which is, for me, I really like it. I really like the amber on black. Some people don't, but I really do like it. I just wish it would stay on. <sighs> okay. If anybody get, gets one of these radios, get out to get this uh, <laughs> display to stay on. Um, I'll send you a free multimeter. <laughs> I tried pushing and holding, and that doesn't do anything. So, and it, like I said, the documentation is really poor. But I may have missed it because I wanted to get to this review. I had this radio since last Friday, but been really busy. Haven't had a chance to get to it. That's my excuses. We're moving on. Next, okay. Look and feel. Um, the knobs are pretty smooth. This is the tuning knob. This is the volume knob. They're pretty smooth. Not really great. Again. This is, as the name implies, a travel radio, and I'll show you exactly why it's called a travel radio besides its size. Besides its size. Hmm. I don't know if that's good English or not. And then uh, over here we have the uh, earphone jack and a power jack. It doesn't come with a power adapter. Matter of fact, it comes with this, and it comes with the crappy manual and this pouch, which has no belt loop on the back so this is just a storage and protection pouch so so much for that um, what else look and feel I guess I'll mention at this time that it it's it sets upright pretty good it's pretty yeah, it's pretty stable not real stable and it does have a little uh, Thing you do on the back so you can set it down like that on an angle but the telescopic antenna number one and maybe I should have more light on this um, is mounted on the back it's not on the top it's on the back and it's down a little bit from the top consequently when you set the radio down like that you can you can you can swivel the antenna. I got to be careful not to break it off because it's really stiff. And you can pull it forward a little bit, but as you can see, not near enough. It's uh, almost still, you know, shooting out this way where you want it to be straight up and down for listening to short wave. So I wish the antenna was mounted on the top so that you could bend it, which it does. You can see it does it, it does bend, but it doesn't bend far enough forward so that you can get it vertical again when you've got it set on this angle, this little stand. So I, that's kind of a negative. I think the uh, the Grundig was the same way. I'm not positive. Again, I don't have the Grundig anymore, so I can't compare it. So look and feel. I think it feels pretty good. The buttons, uh, all the buttons in here, and you'll see other buttons here in a few minutes, they all seem to work pretty good. Uh, so I'm going to give it, because of the antenna configuration, I'm going to give it a B. So that's a B. I want to put that on my little sheet here. It's a B. And the next thing is readability of the display and the buttons. Uh, the lettering on the buttons are white on black, so they show up very good. Pretty small, but of course this is a small radio, so the lettering can't be too good. <laughs> I mean, too big. Um, the actual display itself, and I'll try to get the lighting right, is very good. It's a very good display. Very easy for me to read. Even the small print I can read. So, it was, it was just stay on! <laughs> oh, jeez. So, readability. I'm going to knock it down a letter because it won't stay on. Now, somebody can tell me how to get it to stay on, then... It'll go back to an A. So that's a B. Power options. Um, not a whole lot of power options. It, uh, as I mentioned before, it does have um, 
a power uh, connector here for plugging in uh, AC power, uh, an AC to DC converter, and it uses six volts here, and it uses um, four AA batteries in the back here, which, uh, since this is uh, probably uh, really um, up-to-date modern electronics, probably won't draw a lot of power, so those batteries should last a long time. And that's the power options. That's it. So, <coughs> kind of average, <coughs> excuse me, power options. So, since it's kind of average, I'm going to give it a C. It's just going to give it a C. Now, maybe I'm knocking it down too much because you can't really expect too much on a radio like this for power options. But, eh, I'm going to give it a C. What the heck? Okay, tuning. The tuning um, is accomplished a couple of ways. You can um, use the up down arrows to tune. You can use the tuning knob. You can change the tuning rate, um, how fast it tunes. And it's got memory storage so that you can go to the memory, mo memory mode and tune through those memory locations. So, tuning wise, and it's really smooth. It doesn't jump around. It's nice and smooth. So tuning, I'm gonna give tuning, I'm gonna give tuning A because it's pretty smooth and it's got a lot of tuning options. So I'm gonna give it a, an A. Now audio quality is excellent. I, I this little speaker here does an excellent job. Uh, I listened to FM for a few microseconds because I'm not really into FM, and it was. Beautiful. There was nothing wrong with the sound. Of course, one speaker, so it's mono. The um, output of the headphones will be stereo, but and and the and on shortwave, it's it's very clear. Um, it's got plenty of volume. So for audio, I'm going to give it an A. Now, special features. Here's where um, this thing really becomes a travel radio. And what I mean by that is behind this little door is this switch that lets you change the time this, that is displayed on this thing um, uh, in the various time zones by just turning this knob. See there? Did you notice it? I probably didn't. Let me change the angle here and try it again. Okay, it's saying I'm in, uh, according to Istanbul. And I don't think I've set the time yet. Uh, <laughs> that display went off again. Um, so it's showing that the, in Istanbul, well, let's go back to GMT. Okay, GMT straight up. So this is saying it's 250, which is obviously wrong because... Right now it's 10:36 GMT time, and then you have to push this button again, and then you can flip around here to the various time zones to see what the time is. And that's kind of handy if uh, number one, if you're traveling and you go to a different time zone, and number two, if you're listening to short wave and uh, you want to see your you're listening to a Shortwave station and it's in Istanbul, for instance, you can see what the time is. But of course, you got to do what I haven't done, which is set the basic time. I haven't done that. And then down here, it's got a little time zone map. And here's all the buttons for setting the times. You've got two times. Uh, one you call local, which is whatever your local time is. And one is some other world time, which you probably set to GMT. And then you've got some alarm functions, and you've got a uh, timer sleep function, and we all know what that is by now. And then you've got a very important button way down here, which you can't read, is reset. In case the thing, the process, microprocessor in, gets in here gets totally screwed up because you push too many buttons too many times, and you, it doesn't know what you're doing. Okay, so much for that. Um, the buttons we've got, uh, we've got, uh, we need a microphone, no, and the micro, uh, we need a, uh, yeah, a magnifying glass. Um, you can set the step rate on the various international bands from time, from 9 kilohertz to 10 megahertz, 
and then you can set the uh, FM and AM and long wave, and then you can you can by pushing these short wave buttons. Let me get the playback on if I can. You can see it. You can jump through the various uh, short wave international bands by hitting that button. And this is also the ATS automatic tune and store function and you press and hold I say hello you press and hold and now it's scanning in this case I was in a shortwave band it's scanning through all the shortwave band and storing any strong stations it finds into its internal memory and it beeps when it goes to the next international band. It's on 19 meters right now. And um, so it does have that AT ATS function, which uh, I believe the uh, G8 also had the same function. Now, it does have, let me stop this scan. There we go. <clears throat> it does, has, does have various display modes. And you hit this button over here called display. And it will show different things. Number one, it'll turn it back on. And here it's showing the different time. It's showing the world time. So yeah, like I said you got two times. And then here's here's the local time, 8 a.m., which is wrong. It's actually six o'clock in the morning or something like that. And then here's the temperature. It does have a thermistor for measuring the temperature, and it's 84 degrees in my office quite warm. Uh, we had a little bit of cool spell, but that went away. But it's coming back, so I'm sitting here sweating right now. Uh, and then we go back. And this, which I couldn't find initially, this is the signal strength. And it's similar to the similar, similar to the signal strength um, meters, I call it, but it's a, new, it's a number. It's not actually a grid. It's a number. Um, that you see on the uh, Sanjian radios. So, that, and that's a whole t topic all by itself as how they do this. Uh, and it's it's not very straightforward. I would prefer just a bar graph and not numbers, but that's my preference. So, like I say, you can display a lot of different things by hitting that button. And it does have memories. I couldn't find uh, how many memories it has. I, I'm like, okay, let me look one more time while I'm thinking about it. And how many memories it has? Da, 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 specifications. The shortwave band is 2.3 megahertz to 26.1 megahertz. So that's the... And long wave is 153 to 513 kilohertz. And nothing about memory. It might be in here someplace. I just have not found it. Okay, we won't dwell on that. This probably got a couple hundred memories. Uh, let me look on the box. This actually, the box on the back here has more information than the manual does. And... Oh, 500 memory. See, I couldn't find that in the manual. Here it is on the back of the box. So you probably ought to make a copy of the back of the box. That's a better manual than the manual itself. I digress. Um, one new function that the G8 did not have is it does have the RDS function on FM. And if I go to FM, if I go to FM, okay, Oops, better turn sound down because we don't want to get a copyright violation. Okay. Um, this is, this. whoa, you can't see it. This is showing the, um, the, j j the type of music that this, oh my gosh. Even the time that it's on, it's not very long. Um, this is showing the station and that it, um, broadcast rhythm and blue music on this particular station. And there's a couple of different things that will give you um, 
with regards to RDS, and it does say in the manual what that is. And I'll look that up real quick for you. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. RDS will give you, and I'm sitting in a dark, so it's hard for me to read, the program name, um, which means the station name, and the program type, which is you just saw that, that what the program type was for that particular channel. Um, program text is whatever text they want to transmit. And this data, what kind of data that they want to transmit. Do they want to transmit the uh, song that's playing, the title of the song, the artist? And all of this information is totally dependent on what the radio station wants to send out in this RDS function. So if you're into RDS, it now has RDS function. So let's go back. So special features, I think it's got a lot of special features. I'm going to give it an A on special features. Reception testing is the only thing else to be done. Um, I've done a, some short listening to it in here in my office. And um, the other day, the um, Troy bands were very active. And this was picking up a lot of stuff, but I didn't record it. Um, so I'll have to do that um, later on to give it a grade on reception test. So that's kind of the uh, new, new, brand new Eaton Traveler 3, it's called, uh, radio. And uh, I'm trying to remember, I think it's about $60. I got this uh, through my Amazon account. And they had, at the time, which was last Friday, they had about a half a dozen in stock. They're pretty scarce. Uh, so you can go on my Amazon store and find it. And uh, if you want to, you can buy one. I, I think it's uh, based on everything except re reception testing, which I haven't done yet. I think it's a pretty good radio for a travel radio. And it's, you can see the size of it there. Um, I wouldn't say that it would be your only radio. Uh, but it's definitely a radio that you can take with you, and it does a pretty good job of shortwave, which is the band we are interested in. So if you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. Where's my thumb? Oh, there's my thumb. Thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, that would be a great thing to do. Um, I'm still waiting for them to release the satellite, the Eaton Satellite radio in this series there it's been delayed looks like another month at least and the satellite radio I think is um, the upgrade um, their version of the Grundig G3 which was which is a very good radio has a lot of features and I'm looking forward to that I noticed that even though Amazon doesn't have any available yet they dropped the price and at one time it was $225, and now it's less than $200. So maybe if they delay it some more, maybe it'll drop down to $150. You never know. So anyway, that's the show for today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.